He'll make it for sure. Now that's why I backed him on Tap Touch. Hey, Luke. Yes, Gene Simmons. He's probably the best when it comes to this stuff. Thanks, Gene. You've got the touch. You got the touch. You got the power. Got the touch? Choose Tap Touch. Better your bet. Download the app today. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call 1 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Hoops Heaven proudly brings to you Basketball Hustle. But Ellis fumbled the ball. Two on the shot clock goes up a prayer. Yes! As he was falling to the ground, it's a three! He was shot it literally from the hip. Definitely a highlight. Here come the Billikens. Four on two. McCall, Ellis, left corner. We miss now. Bang! From way down under, Cody Ellis. Now it's time for another episode of Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle. Hello and welcome to Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle and we're here for another season, Cody. It's almost incredible to believe that we're actually here to the NBL season and we start this week at Hoops Fest in Perth and that we're doing this for another whole season. This is a sixth season doing Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle for me and glad to have you back on board. So a lot to get through. It's been a massive off-season across the NBL and also for you in the NBL 1 and also with what happened at the Olympic Games and now... The blitz is over. The season's done. We've had some shock coaching coaching news in the in the very recent um, and late preseason and off season as well. We're here as always, thanks to Hoop Seven and Tab Touch. I'm Chris Pike, but the man everyone is tuning to hear from the former Illawarra Hawks and Sydney Kings forward, no longer a former Warwick Senators mm, yeah. forward either. You're, you're a current Warwick yes. Senators forward as well, Cody Ellis. Thanks for joining me once again, mate. Good to be back again. I can't believe it's uh, it's it's here again already. Yes. It uh, seems like five minutes ago we were, you know, talking about how uh, how good Tassie was, mm. and uh, yeah, looking forward to the upcoming Olympics and and the big off season of, of basketball going on. But uh, yeah, look, excited for the upcoming season and lots going on, lots to talk about mm. uh, for our first episode and uh, just ahead of Hoops Fest. So looking forward to it. Yeah, a, ma- a massive week ahead. It's only a couple of days away now and all games in Perth this weekend yeah. and looking forward to seeing how the old Challenge Stadium looks with uh-huh. some basketball action back there and then the other three games all at RAC Arena, starting with a championship rematch as well with Melbourne and Tasmania on Thursday night, which is exciting. Last time we spoke, you were preparing for a... A comeback from a short-lived yeah. retirement, and now yeah. all of a sudden you've been through an entire mm. NBA One West season back at at the Senators. You made the finals again. I think you had a lot of fun mm. playing with Michael Harris and yeah. Todd Withers, especially who are now preparing for their Perth Wildcats seasons together. Mm. Did you make the right call to to come back? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, the short retirement was <laughs> uh, was a good little mental reset for me. Um, I think we spoke about it when I did decide to come back. Kind of that five, six months of not even thinking about mm. playing or anything like that uh, was was something that I wasn't really aware that I needed at the time. So, um, you know, it was, it's one of those things that if I had have said, all right, I don't want to do pre-season and this and that, I would still would have had the season on my mind and all that. So I think just a complete separation for, for that few months mm. was really good and really what I needed. And when mm. I came back, look, obviously I was playing catch-up all season, yeah. so that wasn't fun. Struck down with illness mm. more times than ever before. Mm. I think I missed more games this season than I have in the entire rest of the time I've played <laughs> yeah. for the Senators. So, yeah. um, and again, stuff that was kind of out of my control, unfortunately. So, um, no, look, I, um, I had, a, had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun playing. Mm. And like you said, you know, Mike Harris and Todd Withers were, were a lot of fun mm. to play with and two unbelievable human beings, not just, not mm. just basketball. So, um, you know, really looking forward to see how they go with the Cats this season yeah. and hopefully both get some opportunity and run with it. And, yeah, um, yeah look, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Interesting season as well. I think for, from a men's point of view in the NBL 1 West, we got a grand final that I don't think any of us expected no. when we ended up seeing yeah. the Wills and Tigers thanks to Marshall Nelson's yeah. heroics and then the Mandurah Magic thanks to thanks to Joel Murray more than more than anything who was the MVP of the league who came from, came from nowhere virtually to play here for the first time. And then Mandurah winning a first ever championship. It yeah. was a... A season of unexpected happenings. It was such a fun grand final to watch. Yeah. You know, Willis and Willis and were in control for ninety eight percent of that yes. game, and uh, like I said just the the heroics late mm. in, in the game was um, was yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch, and it was 
yeah, again, a very, very surprising grand final matchup. Probably not so much if you had have called it later in the season, yep. but if you had a call it preseason, you would have said, you know, you're dreaming. So, <laughs> yes. uh, no, look, it was, it was good. And, um, Utley, uh, doing a, an unbelievable mm. job with, with the magic and just finding two absolute diamonds that were just ended up being just some unbelievable, again, human beings from what I hear, yeah. um, as well as great basketball players. Yeah. Um, because I think Durr was, was probably one of my favorite players outside my own team, obviously, yes. um, around the league this year. Yep. And I think he kind of went a little bit unspoken about because of, you know, <laughs> yes, the, because of the elite teammates he had as yeah. well. So, um, Unbelievable job. Willerton were, were awesome. You know, men are running the ship mm. at, at Willow just always has them up and running and they're always tough to, to play against. And you're right, you know, Marty Nelson with some heroics yes. against against his former side yes, to, yes. to knock them out was uh that was fun to watch as well. Played the grand final at RSA Arena for the first time. Did you like that? Yeah. And is that something you would like to be part of hopefully one day? Oh absolutely. That was uh I think that was great. Mm. I think it was good. They um you know the, the fans came out. It looked like it was you know a rocking atmosphere, yeah, it was. And, yeah. and it was um, it was great. And I think it really just puts that extra bit of motivation for teams to, mm. to make it and to, to be able to play on that floor because there's so many guys that have never and might never get a chance to play on that floor other than playing in a grand yeah, final. Yeah, yeah. And it is something very special to play on that court. A lot of guys who are able to play on it constantly may take it a little bit. For granted, because it's just it is what it is. You're able to be able to play on it as many times as you do. Yeah. They, some of the cats guys, you know, they train on it all the time, yeah. and um, especially the women. That's their yeah. their one and only chance. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think that's um, an awesome little added incentive to to making that grand final. And yeah, it was it was awesome. It was great to see. Hello to Elvis as well. Our third co-host. Yes. He's, he's enjoying our our new surroundings. Welcome back for another season, Elvis. Um, last one on the NBL one, and then we'll move on. The national finals, so it mm. happened a week after the, the grand finals as well over on the, the Sunshine Coast. Disappointing that, again, we couldn't get the NBL players yep. involved. So you had an Eltham Wildcats team that didn't have Owen Foxwell or Angus Glover. We had the Mackay Meteors who didn't have Isaac White or, or Luca Yates until the final on the mm. Sunday. He did come back from Illawarra and then no Todd Blanchfield yep. as well. And um, the NBL won North. Women's women's teams, all, all of their top four weren't able to play, so yep. that, that didn't end up being being great. I feel like in theory it's a great idea, but the execution's a little bit trickier. Yeah, it, it certainly is, and it, like you said, it's it's an awesome idea, and mm. I'm, I'm something that I've wanted to have happen for quite some time, yeah. and just be able to get the best teams in the country all together in the one spot over a weekend and playing against each other is an awesome idea, but putting it into practice is a lot harder with how close the seasons mm. are together. Yeah. Not overly sure how you change that, mm. whether you shorten the NBL one season by a fair bit. Yep. It'd have to be three or four weeks yeah. to be able to do it properly. Yep. Um, but again, that's not ideal because lots of the leagues play lots of games already yeah. and there's already too many double headers. And, <laughs> and, and is it worth doing that for the benefit of the national finals but then hurting the NBL one season? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a trade-off for everything, isn't there? Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a fine line and I'm not really sure... If there's a way to get it right, I, I mm. don't really think there is, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think that it's frustrating. It is frustrating because, you know, you watch some of these teams and you know, how widespread the talent is throughout the whole country mm. these days that uh, it, it, it sucks that we can't get the strongest teams from around the country to all play with their full strength squad. Yeah. But that is what it is. You know, it, it's something that they've just got to keep trying to work on and. They may get it right at some point, mm. and may never get it right. Yeah. But um, you know, it's it is tough. And I, I think, from what I heard, the advertising of it wasn't great over no, there. Like no, no one wasn't. really knew it was no, on. So no, I no, when, no, I was over there. We didn't get a lot of people yeah. turning up for the games, and I, I don't think it helped that there was no local team there. Mm, so the closest the closest men's team for the Sunshine Coast was Mackay. That's yeah. not exactly no, close, and. No. And their women's team was the was the the Southern District Spartans, which yeah. isn't that close to again, all, Sunshine Coast either. They're all rival clubs anyway, yeah. so it's a tough one. When it was here in Perth, I think it was done it was pretty well. Yeah. I think the the advertising of it all and the fact that kind of lots of people came and watched teams that weren't necessarily from here. But, mm. but again, that was kind of the, the first real go around of yeah. it, and it's an interesting one. I think there's lots to work on, but uh, like you said, it's good in theory. <laughs> Um, we'll get to the NBL very quickly. Last thing, the biggest part of the off season was 
the Olympics and yep. seeing especially how the Boomers and the Opals performed. Yep. In the end, the Boomers, I think, disappointing yep. the way they finished up in the quarterfinals. Yes. And then the Opals did a great job, I think, to end up bouncing back from a slow start to end up winning bronze. Mm-hmm. What did you make of what you saw in Paris? Yeah, look, it was uh, it was an interesting week mm. um, of watching watching both the men's and women's programs. Um, like you said, the men's not quite living up to the expectations of, of what we've come to know from the boomers, mm. and you know, especially going in with the mindset of medal or medal or yeah. bust, really yeah. now, which is, I mean, rightfully so with the amount of talent we have. Mm. Um, I don't think the team was. Overly balanced. Um, I think we we kind of knew that. Everyone knew that kind of going in. I yeah. think um, you know, Gorgely staff had you know a, a plan in mind and didn't quite come off, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But look, I, I think to be able to get that experience through some of the younger guys is only going to be good moving mm-hmm. forward for them. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's lots of guys there that will be the, the face of the Boomers yep. moving forward. Um, you know, it's probably the last we see of, of Patty and Joe. Yep. Um, in the jersey anyway. Yeah. I, I hope to see them on the coaching staff. Mm. I think that would be uh, silly not to have them involved in some way, shape or form. So, um, but yeah, look, on the on court, wasn't great. Wasn't ideal, unfortunately. Mm. And, um, you know, lots of guys were, were talking about not having Joe play and all that sort of stuff mm. and were disappointed that he didn't get on yeah. and, oh, he shouldn't have even made the team and this and that. Yeah. But, you can't take away what he brings to the team experience-wise and mm. culture-wise. Yeah. And I think for someone that is a, more of a, a casual basketball fan watching that, mm. don't quite understand the impact that someone like that has yep. on the group, especially yep. a younger group. Um, I mean, watching while the game's going on, watching Joe on the sideline mm. was, was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, yeah sure. Because, you know, all the coaching he was doing for the younger guys and – um, talking them through what's going on, what they should be doing, how they should be doing this and that, I think was great for them. Um, we didn't quite see the Superman Patty. No, we, no. <laughs> we saw a little bit we of saw it. A little bit of it, but yeah. not quite what we are used to. But again, he's he's getting he's getting older. He's got a lot of a lot of K's in those yeah. legs, and especially coming off you know a couple of seasons where he hasn't really played a whole lot of basketball. Oh, that was not overly surprising, unfortunately. Mm. Um, on the women's side, I think that. The fact that they kind of laid an egg in that first game yeah. and came out and got punched in the mouth and mm-hmm. then figured out how to turn it around and, and come out and be tough and you know play that Opal style of basketball yeah. that, again, everyone's come to love and enjoy watching um, and then end up with a medal is, is awesome. So, yeah. um, look, oh, I think they were great and watching that, that bronze game was awesome. It was a wicked game. It was one of my favourite yeah, games was. of the whole tournament, men's and women's. So... Uh, yeah, no, it was it was good. It was good sitting up there yelling at the TV and <laughs> jumping up and down, and my wife and son thinking I'm crazy, which is which is pretty standard this time of year. So uh, no, it was it was good. All right, Cody, let's get on to the NBL because it's crazy to think that we're in the middle of September and we're about to start this season. As you said, it doesn't feel like that long ago that we were watching the Jack Jumpers win that championship mm-hmm. and and make history. But now the the Blitz is done. The Brisbane Bullets went through undefeated at the Blitz and. Yeah. And they claimed the the Loggins Bruden Cup, and Tyrell Harrison won the yeah. Ray Borner Medal. He's quickly becoming one of the stories coming into this season. I think he's ready for a breakout season. Um, you don't always read a lot into results at a preseason tournament, and in fairness, if we go back through the winners in past years, we've probably seen more teams end up finishing last than yeah. winning a championship <laughs> that have won yes. the the Blitz. But um, from what you saw over on the Gold Coast, what did you what did you make of things? Yeah, look, you're right. History doesn't say that uh, the winner of that really goes on mm. to do a whole lot during the season, unfortunately. But it, it is what it is. I think Brizzy came in wanting to wanting to prove a point mm. and get things rolling, and, and they certainly did. I think um, you know I'm not I'm not a big on reading too much into preseason games at all. Mm. Um, I think it's it's a, a bit of a you know dust the cobwebs off, and as much as they've been training throughout preseason. You, no comparison to yep. actual gameplay yep. and, and that kind of a thing. So, look, coaches are always testing lineups and letting some of the young guys yep. play a bit more because they probably won't be throughout the season mm. as much. And then just trying to find what gels and what clicks and what's working, what's not. Yeah. You don't overly scout for the other team. You don't 
go through a whole lot of your playbook. You can usually run one or two things, yeah. more concepts than anything, and you just get reads out of it. There's not there's not a whole lot that, that teams really give up in, in the blitz and in any preseason game. So it, it is tough to read into. But it, it was fun to see lots of new faces in different uniforms. Yeah. I think that's um, certainly something that I'm excited for coming into the season. But yeah, look, we saw Adelaide looking really good and then lose by 50 <laughs> yes. when, when most of their players weren't playing. Yep. You know, they, yep. they basically put an NBL1 team out mm. on the floor. And again, that's what it's for. You know, you don't want especially the week before the season, you don't want one of your star players to go down hurt. And we've seen, we've seen that every a couple of teams. Yeah. So, yeah, look, it's, it's tough to read into it, but um, again, good to see everyone out there and, and playing again and um, to see all the teams competing. Not only did we see a couple of injuries, we've seen a suspension come out of yeah. the blitz as well. Um, you were you were busy watching, watching Hawthorne play at the same time, yes. but when you caught up on what Gillespie did with his headbutt on Sean Bruce from the New Zealand Breakers, I think a lot of people naturally thought Brucey took a dive when they first saw it, yeah. but then once they saw that the cut was above his eye, they realised that he didn't take a dive. Yeah. What What do you think of what happened? And is the one game suspension fair enough? It's tough. It's yeah. You bring up a sore point in Hawthorne, by the way. So <laughs> thanks for that. But yeah, look, that's it's one of those things that because it was Brucey, you know, he's kind of that antagonizer. He mm. has been his whole career and. Um, that what that's what makes him great to have on your team, right? He's, he's that guy that gets in the opposition's heads. Um, whether you think it's good or not, it's what he does, and he does it great. So he's obviously chirped and got in Gillespie's head, and as a new import in the league, to snap like that in a mm. preseason game, and I mean, he was walking down the other end, and he just kind of turned and beeline straight for Sean. Mm. And yeah, I mean, I was, I was pretty shocked when I first yeah. saw it. I was. It was uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting one. So, I mean, it's he's a, he's a big dude, Gillespie. Mm. So coming at you and throwing a headbutt at you. I mean, all those people saying that Brucey took a dive. <laughs> I'd like to see any of them cop a a, yeah. a headbutt from someone six ten. Mm. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's it's tough. And then yeah, obviously splitting his eye open. That's um, that's legit. Do I think the two games down to one with an early plea is enough? Absolutely not. Mm. I think. The NBL probably needed to set a bit of a precedent here because now it's oh, I can go out and headbutt someone mm. and I'll just miss a game, you know. Like it's it, it's something that I think they could have really stamped a bit of authority mm. and given him three, four games, you know, um, because yeah, especially being a preseason game, mm. it, it's just it's one of those things that the game doesn't matter. Mm. Honestly, it really mm. doesn't. I think it was like an eight-point game with about a minute and a half to go. Anyway, it wasn't. It was pretty much over anyway. Yeah. So, um, but on the New Zealand side, like to see your import snap like that mm. this early in the season, mm. I think is a bit of a red flag and yes. some, probably some warning signs. So it's uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks moving forward. Um, well, there's a real chance it cost them their first game as well against yeah. against Brisbane when they now come up against Tyrell Harrison and Rocco Sakaski yeah. without their starting five men. Well, that's it, and they don't. They don't have a whole lot of other bigs yeah. to be able to back back him up. Yeah. So um, you're right, could cost them their first game of the season, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of interesting stuff to, yes. to start the year. So. Yes. All right, Cody. Before we take our first break, let's go through some of the big big off season news because it was a dramatic period, it's fair to say, and yes. no surprise to see that a lot of the drama was happening in Adelaide once again. I think we're all pretty excited when Scott Ninnis was appointed to to be the full-time coach back in Adelaide after what he did in the back end of last season, getting them close to close to getting back into the playoffs. He did a great job. He was pretty excited about the job. They built a team ar- around him. They started their, their pre-season campaign, and then as quickly as it started, he was relieved of his duties. I mean, before <laughs> we'll go through the details, but... When you found out, what was your reaction? Uh, shock, honestly. Mm. It was, um, yeah, look, obviously a show favourite, Scotty, but, um, yeah, look, I think that he did everything right to earn the contract that he got mm. and then to just kind of up and sack him a few weeks before the season started is is pretty wild. And, um, yeah, it's just, I, I was, yeah, I'm still a bit dumbfounded from it and mm. just at the constant, I can't think of a 
PG word to use. <laughs> um, but <laughs> just like, uh, I don't know, the, it's now been seen by everybody how, I guess, silly this management of mm. the Adelaide 36s are. And I, I don't know, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, half the playing group was, mm. you know, in shock and also yeah. a bit pissed off about it as well, yeah. which is rightfully so because lots of those guys would have signed because Scotty was the head coach. Mm. And look, as as a player, you've just got to suck it up and move mm. forward with it. But, uh, but the, it's what's that, five coaches in yeah. five years now? Yeah. I mean, they've finally stopped paying off a couple of them, I think. <laughs> yes, but, yes. Uh, but, you know, you, you're paying all these coaches all this money for... Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know whether they're just jumping the gun and signing mm. coaches too early because they're scared that they're not going to find someone or, mm. or what the deal is. But, I mean, to do to do this a couple of weeks before the season is, is just wild. Mm. It's crazy. And, you know, whether Scott is someone that is you know, a, a favourite of the show or mm. not, I think it doesn't matter who it would have been. Yeah. It's the wrong thing. And that's something that you just, honestly, I, it, you just can't do that. It is crappy. The easiest way to sum up the situation is that Scott was appointed the head coach and naturally felt like as a head coach he was able to do things the way he wanted to do them. So that's how he was doing it to start pre-season. But they had hired a GM of basketball, Matt Weston, who had his own vision. And I think it's fair to say that was different to what Scott was seeing. And he brought in two international coaches, Mike Wells and Marco Marinovic, and they seemed to be on the same page. So they had a vision of the way they saw things yeah. going and Scott had his vision. I mean, in the end, the club backed in Matt Weston and his new assistants and decided they didn't like the way Scott was doing it. Yeah. But um, if you appointed the head coach, surely things should be able to be done your way. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> hire people for a reason, right? Yeah. You know, you, you don't hire a plumber and then tell him how to do his job, <laughs> yes. right? You know, yeah. it's, it's the same with this. You hire a head coach because you believe in them and their vision for what the team should be mm-hmm. doing. And, you know, we, we've seen this multiple times where, you know, management gets involved and mm. it never works out well. No, no. And it's constantly not worked out well for the Adelaide 36s. Mm. You know, we, we saw it with the Illawarra Hawks for a while there, you know. It just doesn't work out well. Uh, Sydney, Ki- Sydney Kings a long time ago when <laughs> they had... 100 owners, when, you know. When you were playing there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, it's one of those things that if management gets involved in what is being put on the floor in terms of like, oh, telling the coach you should be doing this, this and this, it yeah. never works out well because you are not a head coach. You're the management, right? That's fine. Yeah. You can do all the, all the managing and all that from behind the scenes, but you hire a head coach for a reason. There's, there's no way you should be putting your fingers in the pie and saying, you know, you should be doing it this way and that way. So, yeah, again, we, we've yeah, seen it too many times, unfortunately, but it is what it is, unfortunately, and, and it, that uh, Mike Wells, I think, will, will be good. I mean, he's, he's super experienced. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think, you know, he's, he's been an assistant in the NBA and the NCAA and all that kind of a thing, but I think this is his first head coaching, head coaching job. Head coaching job, yes. So. It's, it's one of those things, you know, you, you're getting rid of a, a known head coach and a mm. proven head coach for someone that hasn't done it before. And has never seen but the NBL before. Exactly. It's yeah. a completely different league. So but interesting decisions, but it's kind of what we've come to expect from the 36s, unfortunately. Mm. Well, speaking of that, um, the New Zealand Breakers are in a fascinating situation as well. So yeah. Modi Mayor decided it was time to leave and took up a job in Japan and the best of luck to him because he did a fantastic awesome. job and he had to look after his family yeah. and I'm sure financially it was a better offer and yeah. he can set himself up for, for his career. So you, you can't fault a guy for, no. for, for making that decision. No. Um, but they've gone a, a totally different route with their coach as well. Mm-hmm. They've gone Pateri Kaponen, who's come out of Finland straight out of playing. Yeah. So like Mike Wells, he's a guy that's never seen the NBL before and mm-hmm. never been a head coach before and, it's going to be fascinating to see how he goes. He's never been a coach. <laughs> yes. He hasn't yes. been an assistant or anything. He's, yeah, look, he's, I'm pretty sure he's 36 years old, so mm. he's a year and a half, two years older than <laughs> yep, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, straight from a, a pretty good playing career from what I had a look at, you know, mm. playing for the Finnish national team and, and that kind of a thing. Yep. So um, he was a point guard, kind of shooting guard mm. player, so mm-hmm. 
he, he's certainly going to know the game and understand the game very well. Oh. So you've, um, you've done your research a little bit, yeah. a little bit. I had a bit of a look into him. So, <laughs> but look, I, obviously Modi's going to be sorely missed. Oh. I mean, he was he was so good for the league. He was yeah. so good for the Breakers franchise. Yeah. I think that um, so good for his players. Oh, just yeah, everyone everyone that you talked to said you know he was tough but fair. But yeah. everyone loved him. He got the best out of everyone, mm. and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss him storming up and down the sidelines <laughs> yes. and jumping around like a like a lunatic. So that yeah. uh, and, and to be fair, I'm going to miss talking to him after yeah. every game too. Well, that's it. You guys chatted a lot, so um, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. But uh, obviously, getting a gig over in Japan that's that's kind of the place to be right now, money wise. So mm. uh, good on him. Congratulations to that. But uh, yeah, look, I, I think it's going to be interesting for New Zealand. I think there's going to be some some growing pains for sure. But to get, you know, Parker Jackson Cartwright back, I think, yep. is, is huge for them. Yep. Uh, just kind of that floor general and that leader and that elite player yep. as well, I think uh, it is huge for them. And I think that's going to help them, I guess, steady the ship a bit quicker mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. probably what would have been expected. All right, Cody, let's take our first break. We'll hear from Tab Touch, And when we come back, let's go through some of the playing changes we've seen over the off-season. We'll go through team by team and then I'll get you to put your neck on the line with some season predictions. Love it. Sounds good. Can you picture the first goal before the ball has even bounced? Can you read the footy future in the mullet of a full forward? You've got the touch. Got the touch? Download the Tab Touch app today. You win some, you lose more. Okay, welcome back to Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle. Our first episode now ahead of NBL 25. I'm here with Cody Ellis once again. Still going through what happened over the off-season, mm. Cody. Um we had some big players departing us. Um, Jack McVeigh, the championship hero from the Jack Jumpers, has now become an Olympian and he's now also got an, M- an NBA chance. So congratulations to him. Mitch Creek, another huge loss at the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. He's been there from the start. Those are two guys that are just impossible mm. to replace. I mean, to find an import level player um, who, who is a local, it's just it's so hard to find, find them. Aaron Baines gone from the Brisbane Bullets. Gary Clark not coming back to the Illawarra Hawks. And then three big losses for Melbourne United, Ariel Happorty, Joe Luala Chul and Luke Travers. Um, anyone you want to comment on? Yeah, look, I mean, they're all massive losses. All massive losses to, well, firstly, their teams, but also the league. Oh. I think that, uh, yeah, look, obviously, firstly, congrats to Jack on uh, getting yeah. an NBA gig. I think that's great. Um, I thought he was awesome at the Olympics yep. as well. Yep. I thought he was great for the Boomers. Um, Baines is a tough one. I'd assume this is probably the end of... His career, I think so. Um, and we kind of figured that that would be the case at the end of mm. last season. We didn't think anyone else would really no. want to pick him up, unfortunately. And um, so, yeah, look, I mean, if, if it is, then uh, congrats on a heck of a career, yes. Bainsey, because yeah. uh, it's been a it's been a lot of fun watching him. Um, and obviously, very sad with how it's finished. Yeah. But um, yeah, look, creaky, massive loss. I think mm. Southeast Melbourne went from, or well, in my books, one of the favourites. To, to the title when they yeah. signed Sobi to now kind of missing that that key piece. Yep. Um, yep. And, uh, yeah, look, I was really looking forward to seeing those two um, yeah. back together and, and how they'd play together. After yeah, both yeah. And Derek two. Walden too, because I still yeah. remember that game. Was it in Gippsland where yeah. Walden and Creek went head-to-head it and was, scored 40 points each? It was oh, like I think 49 and 48 yeah. or something like that. I mean, that. Yeah, so to see them as teammates would have been fun. Would, yeah, it certainly would have been. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a wicked, wicked game. Gary Clark's a huge loss. For, for the Hawks, um, I think he was an absolute game changer for them and kind of put him on his on his back oh. and, and carried them along late in that season last year. Huck Porty and JLA and Travers, I mean, that's three massive names yeah. all departing from the one team. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, for, for Melbourne to lose three guys of that calibre is, is, is massive for them and that's something that they're going to struggle to fill fill the void of those yep. three, but I think they've done a good job of recruiting um, to, to cover as much as possible. But yeah, look, it, there's so many big names in there that are all super talented and, oh, again, lots of them local mm. but, uh, that we're really going to miss in the league. But um, yeah, look, good luck to all of them. There's some big names coming back to the league as well. Mm. Jarrell Martin, unfortunately, he's returned in Adelaide after playing in Sydney, has, has hit a bit of a speed bump. So <laughs> we won't see him for a little while, but... Deng Adele is looking like he's ready to, to have a big season in, in Brisbane. Jack White will help cover those losses yep. in Melbourne. Mojave King will be fascinating to see how he goes a couple of years after his last last stint. We touched on Derek Walden Jr. now coming to the Phoenix. 
And then Xavier Cooks and Cam Oliver together in that front court at the, yeah. at the Sydney Kings. Yeah, look, lots of lots of big returning names, which is great. And, uh, you know, hopefully in the season to come, we can see a few of those departures uh, start to return. But, uh, look, unfortunate for Jarrell Martin. I think that, mm. that really hurts. That sucks. But, I mean, mm. it's it's opened up the door for a, a pretty big signing that yes. we'll, we'll talk about soon. Dang Adele, you're right, looks, looks really good. Mm. He looked really good so far from what we've seen. And um, excited for him to have a big season. Yep. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that's kind of been just on the cusp of being absolutely elite yep. and uh, didn't really have a great stint when he was here mm. last time. Mm. Um, so really looking forward to seeing what he can produce. Mm. Jack White, fun to have him back. He's going to be great. Feels a void for kind of that in between what Luke Travers and Huck Porty were. Mm. <laughs> he's kind of an in yes, between is, those yeah. two. Yep. So, um, It'll, it'll be really good to see him, and especially after another season under his belt, mm. after his, his pretty bad injury. Yeah. Um, Harvey King looks unreal as well. Mm. He looks really, really switched on, really ready to go. Mm. You know, it looks like he's gone away and worked on his game in the past 12 yep. months, yep. which is great. And um, I'm expecting a bit of a breakout year from him mm. as well. Derek Walton, again, speaks for himself. Yep. I mean, he, he's going to be a lot of fun yep. watching him with Sobes. Yeah. But Zave Cooks and Cam Oliver... On the same team is, mm. is terrifying. Yes. I mean, that's two NBA calibre players that teams are going to have to try and figure out how to guard because mm. that's, uh, in terms of stretching the floor, probably not the best, mm. but uh, I don't know how teams are going to be able to cover these two guys because um, they're just both very dominant and have proven that to be dominant in this mm. league and uh, they're going to be fun to watch. Yeah. And then you throw in... Everyone else on that team, we've yeah. got Galloway and Tui and yeah. Adams. and Yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Um, from what we've seen of the new faces, a lot of teams have gone for new point guards. So we've got Kendrick Davis in Adelaide, James Bateman in, in Brisbane. Um, I think Rob Edwards so far, I think, has been the standout that we've seen from the three in Cairns. Um, Darius Days at Illawarra has big shoes to fill to yes. try to cover what Gary Clark did. Freddie Gillespie, not a great start at New Zealand, as no. we talked about, but Matt Mooney is showing good signs. Yep. Dylan Windler has come to Perth. Joe Wieskamp at the Phoenix. DJ Hogue should have been on a different list, so ignore that. From the new faces, what do you what, what have you made of them? Yeah, look, again, it's, it's tough to say. It's tough to say because it's preseason. But um, I'm intrigued to see what Days does. Like you said, he's got massive shoes to fill. Yep. Um, but I think he's got the potential to be able to, to fill them. Yeah, um, yeah. Again, new to the league, so it's going to take him a while to figure yeah. it out. I, I think he will. It's fascinating, isn't it? You get some strange ways players end up being signed. So he was he was out here playing for the Shanghai Sharks. Yeah. They played a preseason game against the Hawks. He yeah. hits five three pointers, I think, in the first first half. Yeah. A couple of weeks later, the Sharks decide not to sign him, yeah. and he signs at the Hawks. There's some fascinating ways guys yeah, end up being signed. Yeah, very much so, very much so. But um, I think that you know, with with the Shanghai team, they can have like seven imports on those <laughs> yes. teams. So yes. it's, it's a tough one, but. Um, yeah, look, I think that, like you said, he proved that he can shoot the ball. Mm. So I'm looking forward to see what they can do with him in terms of developing him into being kind of that go-to guy. Yep. But, yeah, look, he's he's got big shoes to fill, like, mm. like we've said. And then, yeah, look, Freddie Gillespie, I was kind of intrigued to, to watch play. Mm. I think that, um, again, it's kind of like the, the Derek Pardon. This, yes. is, this is his replacement. Yeah. He's going to be better than him. And, yeah. Which is exactly what they said about Mango well, Madiang yeah, last we, season. Yeah, we've kind of <laughs> keep hearing that, unfortunately. Yes. But um, yeah, look, at the moment it doesn't look like he's got his, his head screwed on properly mm-hmm. um, in terms of being able to stay composed and, yeah. and deal with everything that comes with the NBL. Yeah. Um, so he'll be an intriguing one when we do eventually get to see him oh. play. What about the next stars? So we've got Rocco Zakasi coming back to Brisbane, Alex Tui coming back to Sydney, and then... New faces, Malik Lewis at the Phoenix, Ethan Almanza at the Wildcats, Kareem Lopez at the Breakers, and then Roman Schalepa is the fascinating one. So he mm. had signed at the Tasmania yeah. Jack Jumpers. Scott Roth wasn't happy that he wasn't as committed to basketball as he would have hoped, and he wanted to keep coming back to Brisbane to play rugby. Yeah. But from all reports, he's going to still end up being signed by another mm. team as a next star. What are your thoughts on that, first of all, and the next stars class? Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting one, right? Because it's like if you've got the NBL calling, then you give every other sport up. 
You would think so. You'd think so, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. So, I don't know. He, he's got to figure out what he wants to do. Mm. Um, and once he does that, then, you know, good luck to him. Mm. Um, but I think he could be, I think he can be an elite player, yeah. um, especially in the NBL. So, interesting start to his uh, mm. his NBL career, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens with him and, and where he lands. But yeah, look, the the crop of next stars looks looks fun. Um, excited to see it. Obviously, we know Rocco and, and Tui, um, so we know what we're going to get out of those guys. I think they're both primed for big seasons. Lewis, G League player, I think he's going to be decent. Yeah. Um, you know, Almanza, I'm actually really excited for. Yeah. He's kind of that void for for Alex Sar a yeah. little bit, trying to fill that void. But uh, I mean, he's had an elite. Absolutely elite, like junior yes. national career already. Yeah. Two gold medals and a silver medal and MVPs at national tournaments, yeah. and he's uh, he's already got a heck of a resume. So I'm really excited to see what he does. Yeah, look at this research, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lopez, yeah. Look, um, from what I read, was a you know kind of a long, lanky, great defender. I yeah. think he's going to be fun to watch because yeah. we don't really get too many great defenders like yeah. that through the Next Stars program. Um, and, and I think like Rocco and Tui were last year, I think he's a two-year project for the yeah. Breakers, so it'll be good to see him develop over, over that period. Well, that's it. I think that seeing guys develop over a couple of years is, mm. is awesome, yeah. and I think that's something that hopefully the Next Stars program, while we want to have guys come in, develop, and go straight to the league, mm. I think to be able to watch them develop over a couple of years and then get to the yeah. league is is something that... I think the NBL would be able to hang its hat on and say yeah. that that's we're definitely a a stepping stone mm. to the NBA and and young players' development. So um, no, looking forward to it. I think it's a it's a good crop of players, and hopefully Roman can figure out what he wants to do and <laughs> yes. and either sign with someone or or go play rugby. <laughs> yes, well, it has to be one of the teams that doesn't have a next star at the moment. So yeah. if you had to pick a team out of Adelaide, out of Cairns. Out of Illawarra, they don't, Illawarra don't have one no. yet. And Melbourne, Melbourne, where could you see him landing? Because it won't be back at Tasmania. No, it won't. <laughs> no, it certainly won't. I'm thinking Cairns is yeah, the best place because that is the, his best chance to actually play. I think that's, yeah, that was certainly where I was leading, probably closer to home too. Mm. So, yeah, it would be great to see him on, on a Cairns-like team, especially under 40. Yeah. I think 40 would be good for him yeah. to, to kind of figure out what he wants to do yeah. and, 40 is going to get the best out of you, you know, yeah. like Scott Roth does with his players. Yes. 40 is another one that gets the best out of his group all the time. So, yeah, I think that would probably be the the right choice. But, again, it just depends on what other teams are, are mm. willing to, to do and throw at him. All right, let's go, start going through team by team how everyone's shaping up because the season's now only days away, Cody. Um, let's go alphabetically. Starting with the Adelaide 36ers, so we've talked about their coaching situation. We'll see how it plays out. But from a from a playing point of view, they've, they've actually stayed reasonably stable. So mm. they were able to bring back DJ and Isaac Humphreys and and then bring in new imports. So Jarrell Martin won't be starting the season, but Montrez Harrell will be starting the season. And he's a former NBA six man of the year. He's played over 500 games in the NBA and he's a hell of an athlete. Yeah. So I think defensively he'll be great for them. Kendrick Davis looks looks exciting as a as a point guard. Despite all the drama, their playing group actually looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. And, you know, that was a big reason why I was excited to mm. see how these guys went. We have um, fallen into this trap before we have Adelaide, though, haven't we? We certainly have. <laughs> so, I mean, to bring back DJ and Isaac and even Jace today yep, yep. Uh, as that veteran um, level-headed guy, mm. um, Sunday Deck is, is a defender that you can throw out there. And I fresh off going to the Olympics, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great. Young guy, Nick Marshall. Well, he's who's, fresh off an MVP in yes. NBL1 South, too. Yep. yep, which is great. Alex Starling, who just constantly dominates NBL1. Mm. So um, mm. I think that's that's a good returning crop of guys. Montrez Harrell, that's mm. a massive signing. Yes. And something that I'm super excited for. Mm. I'm really excited to see him play. Their only issue is going to be wanting to keep him yeah. when, when Martin <laughs> yes. comes back, unfortunately. Yes. And I'm not sure how they're going to be able to do that. Yeah. But like you said, I mean, you ran through kind of his, his breakdown and he's, from all reports, he's got his head screwed on right as well. Oh. He's He works his butt off. He's constantly in Miami working out. And, yep. you know, talking to some of my agent friends over there, like he's got constantly at workouts and working, his, working hard and getting in the right shape and... Oh. Doing the right things. So it sounds like, you know, we, we get a lot of 
NBA guys on the tail end of their career yep. come down and they think they can you know, come in and dominate and do all this mm-hmm. and they don't really um, have their head screwed on properly, but it sounds like Harold does. Yeah. So if he can come in and do what he did in the NBA, mm-hmm. um, as long as he figures out the refs again, <laughs> yes, like it yes. seems to always come down to that, unfortunately. Yeah. He's going to absolutely dominate. Mm. He's, he's going to be fun to watch um, on both ends of the floor. He's mm. not just an offensive guy. He's a uh, he's really good defensive end. So, yeah, look, I think that great crop of, of players. And like you said, we've fallen into the trap before <laughs> yes. with Adelaide. But um, I am excited for this group because I think they can, can honestly make a run if they all stay healthy and, and really all get on the same page. Mm. Brisbane Bullets. So we talked about how they won the Blitz. They've had a really good preseason, and and really outside of swapping over their two imports. So Bateman and Cook have come in. Shannon Scott and Chris Smith have gone gone out, and obviously losing Nathan Sobey and, and Aaron Baines. It's a pretty similar group, but Denga Dell, as we talked about, is looking good. They bring in experience with Besto and Smith Milner. How do you think they'll be able to go? Yeah, look, I think um, again. Not reading too much into preseason, but you know they seem to all be on the on the same page, mm. which is which is big going into the first round of the year. Mm. Um, and again, a, a really good crop of returning players. Mm. Um, losing losing Sobes is a big one, obviously, mm. but uh, I think they're going to be able to cover him by committee rather than having someone come in and fill his shoes. And it also feels like it was a, kind of a mutual decision. It wasn't so much. Losing somebody, I think they. Mm. I think both parties felt like it was time to to move on. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And look, that's. I mean, that's a good, healthy decision from from mm. both parties as well. Um, so, last thing you want to be doing is is playing because you're not mentally yeah. there. And, yep. and same thing if you're if you're coaching someone that isn't mentally there yep. and you're not as you know invested, then it, it's tough, yep. especially a superstar like Sodes. Mm. So. It's a it's a tough one, but like I said, I think they'll cover him by committee rather than having someone come in and just try and be Nathan Sobey. Mm. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting, especially their bigs, to have some breakout years yeah. for sure. But it'd be nice to see a healthy Casey Playfer yep. Um, yep. after a, a full preseason. Mm. That'd be good. Um, and then Josh Bannon when he yeah. gets back yeah. and healthy because uh, I think he is a, a major key for them and he's just kind of their motor. So... Um, Obviously, Nordo is going to be that that leader, and he's he's going to he's a captain too. Yeah, yeah, which is which is awesome. So congrats to Nordo. So um, we know what we're going to get from him. Mm-hmm. We know what you're going to get from him every night. So um, just having a leader like that is huge. Um, and then Sam McDaniel as well. I think uh, if he can stay healthy, um, same thing. I think he is vital to to this group's success just mm-hmm. on the defensive end. Yeah. Um, so. No, look, looking forward to, to their season. Um, yeah, look, hopefully they can all stay on the same page and stay healthy. Mm. Cairns Taipans seem to say the same thing every season where it's a completely new look team and yeah. it's, that's the case again. So they brought in a lot of new faces, a lot of talent and even some experience. I mean, Dylan Stife is now 32 and he's been yeah. around for a long time. Yes. So great to see him get another chance. And, and he earned the chance by going to the tryout up in Cairns mm-hmm. and and Forty just couldn't say no to him yeah. because of how much he proved that he he wanted the chance. Um, awesome. Jackson McCoy also coming off playing for South Sudan at the Olympics. They bring in Kyle Adnam, Kyron Galloway, who, who had a really good finish to the season in Adelaide, and then their three new imports. So um, Rob Edwards looks like a, just a pure scorer. Pedro Bradshaw, a bit of that sort of foreman, and then mm-hmm. Tanner Grove just as a big a big banger. Unfortunately, they're going to start the season without Armstrong McCoy. And Adnam, which really hurts their their backcourt. But mm-hmm. um, in general, how are they how are they shaping up? Yeah, uh, light on the guards coming into the season. Yes. Very much so, especially when they're all out injured. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, look, obviously, Taron's going to be their go to point guard mm-hmm. for the season when he gets healthy. And bringing in a guy like Kyle Adnam to back him up, I think yep. it's good. Someone with experience and mm-hmm. his great little short bursts, I think he'll he'll be really good for them. Yeah, look. Again, another team with lots of big outs. I think Paul Quoll is a big one for them. Yeah. Um, you know, he was kind of becoming the face of the franchise. He was such a f- Adam Ford guy, he wasn't was, he? It was yeah. really surprising that so, they couldn't keep him, but I assume he just got an offer that he couldn't absolutely. refuse. Absolutely. So, I mean, the big thing is the, the fallout with 
to yes, here and, yes. and forty. Yep, yep. They were best of mates, and then all of a sudden it was it fell apart very quickly, didn't it? Yeah. Other. So it's um, interesting to see or hear what actually happened up mm. there. But mm. um, yeah, he's an interesting one. But again, a, a guy that we've spoken about over the past couple of seasons with him um, in the league. They're not necessarily better with him on the court. No, I, I don't um, think it, I don't think it hurts them. Yeah. No, so I mean, at, at the moment it does because now they don't <laughs> yes. have any guards to yes. be able to bring the ball up. It's going to be like Stan Wardenberg being point guard for this first <laughs> round. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, getting Pat Miller to come back would have been nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think Miller and McCall were a bit of a package deal. I think so. so. Yes. Um, that's not overly surprising. But yeah, look it, again, it, it's. If we've learnt anything from Cairns over the past however long, really, just Cairns in general, mm. but especially in the 40 era, they're going to play hard. Mm. They're, you, they're not going to be an easy beat. They're going to come out and, and scrap it up and, mm. and play to their style. So, look, uh, I just don't think they have enough weapons, yeah. um, especially when their three imports are all kind of big men, really. Yes, yes. So it's, it's, it's a tough one, but uh, it, it'll be good for, for some of these young boys to, uh, to get some minutes and, and really figure out the lead. And I'm looking forward to Taron Armstrong um, yeah. this season. Yeah, I mean, all their stock has been put in having Taron as the point guard, yeah. hasn't it? So let's just hope he's not out for too long. Last one before before we take a break. The Illawarra Hawks. So it was an amazing run that they made under Justin Tatum mm-hmm. to get within one game of a championship series. Yep. Last season, he's back now as coach and hopefully recovered from his NBA championship celebration tour. Yeah. Yep. But it's a very similar team. Basically replaced Justin Robinson for Trey Cowell as their import point guard and now Darius Days replaces Gary Clark as that import four man and it's basically basically the same team. Stability can take you a long way. Have they have they made the right calls? Yeah look I think so. Uh, and they would have tried everything they could to get Gary Clark yeah. back for yeah. sure. Um, I think Justin Robinson was a uh, after they re signed Tyler Harvey mm. you know for, for multiple years, I think he was Justin Robinson probably saw the writing on the wall yes. and, and he was always uh Always gonna gonna be off this roster at the end of last season, unfortunately. Although I, I think he finished the season really well. I mean, he, yeah, he did. He, yeah, he on top of Gary Clark, put them on his back a few mm. times, mm. a few games, and, and really got him over the line. So mm. AJ Johnson, we didn't really see too yeah. much of, unfortunately, but um, we did see spurts, which is yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but Trey Cal, um, I think, is a big pickup for them. Um, mm. A bigger bodyguard, yes, um, that can score the ball and and. You know, play a bit of defense, yeah. and, and hopefully he's in some good shape yes. um, coming into the season. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's a fairly similar team apart from you know the two pieces, really. Mm. So I think that's great. I, I do think that's good coming in. I expect Lockie Olbrich to have a big season. Oh yeah, I think he's yep. uh, he's primed for a big one for sure. Sam Froling just continuing to get better. Mm. I, I think Dave O'Hickey is another one yes. that is. Prime for a massive yeah, season. Yep. He's, he's had a really good off season as well, just figuring out how to take over yeah, uh, games yeah. in NBA One. So it's been fun to watch. Obviously, Whiny on the defensive end, and then yep. Tyler Harvey. You know what we're going to get from him. So, um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited to watch these guys. Mm. I think that um, you know Tatum's going to have them ready to go, and um, it's, it's going to be fun to see what they're like after a full preseason with him. Mm. So, uh, yeah, look, really excited to see the Hawks play. All right, Cody, let's take a break. We'll go through the rest of the teams when we come back. I'll get your predictions and we'll go through round one and gee, wrap up a wrap big show up. already yeah. for, for the know. first one. He'll make it for sure. That's why I backed him on Tap Touch. You got the touch. You got the power. Got the touch? Choose Tap Touch. Better your bet. Download the app today. Imagine what you could be buying instead. Okay, back on Hoops Heaven's basketball hustle. Let's keep running through how the teams are shaping up, Cody. Melbourne United, they would have been devastated the way they went so close to a championship last season and falling up short in Game 5. And not many changes, but significant ones. So basically their front court ripped apart with Joe Luala Chul and Ariel Hakporty going. Big job for Rob Lowe to come in along with Marcus Lee coming back and then... Jack White kind of a swap for Luke Travers. Um, aside from that, they brought all the veterans back. Um, how will they go? Yeah, look, obviously last year they'd be disappointed. So dominant all season, really, mm. and just falling short. But what a grand final series that was. Yes. I mean, we spoke about it in depth, but I mean, that was still probably one of the best grand final mm. series mm. I've, I've ever seen. So that was someone had to 
be on the on the losing yeah. end, unfortunately, and it was Melbourne. But yeah, look, I mean, Vickerman's going to have these guys ready to go uh, as always. Yes, massive outs, like mm. just huge outs. Obviously, we knew Huck Forty was probably going to be gone. JLA and Travers were mm. a bit up in the air for mm. sure, but obviously them not uh, not coming back is big. Jack White and Marcus Lee probably the two biggest signings for the yep. for the off season, and well, two guys that I think are going to fill the shoes of those leaving decently. Mm. Obviously, very different players to, to yeah. the other three, but with the addition of Rob Lowe as an actual fully contracted yes. player, I think is huge because they really, when they started going on their run was when Rob came in as an yeah. injury replacement yeah. and that's when they really started to gel. Yeah. So I think he's going to be awesome for them and I think just in, in terms of like the team chemistry, I think he's, he's great for that. For mm. that. I mean, still having Ian Clark in there. Again, another veteran guy yep. that's a known winner. Obviously, Chris Goulding, unbelievable. He's just going to keep doing his thing and mm. just keep racking up those triples. Um, Delhi and Shea are going to be monsters defensively yeah. again. Um, hopefully, we can see Shea be healthy yes. this whole year. Yes. Um, that would be very handy. Tanner Krebs is the interesting one for me. Mm. I think he went to Melbourne to, to really try and develop and didn't really get too much of an opportunity. No, not when really. he, did, he didn't, yeah. didn't do a whole lot with it. Yeah. He was kind of just out there, unfortunately. So uh, I'm expecting him to have had a big off-season mm. and, uh, and really step up this year. Yeah. Um, and he's going to have to. He's yeah. going to have to just to, I guess, still fill that void a little bit. But, um, no, look, I think a, a guy like Kyle Bowen, again, who, mm. who had a good off-season yeah. and... He's he's again. He's going to have to fill some big shoes yeah. because uh, he's going to have to, to fill the void of, of JLA a little bit and even Huck Forty to an extent. But um, yeah, they're going to be there. They're going to be there or thereabouts yeah. as they always are. Yeah. Um, so always fun to watch him mm. play. Complete unknown, I think, are the New Zealand Breakers. We talked about the coaching situation and completely unknown coach, and they've only brought two players back from that team. Last year, Dane Pino and Parker Jackson Cartwright, who's probably the biggest re-signing yeah. across the league. So it was great to get him to come back, but he's going to have to find it, figure things out with a completely new team. New imports, we talked about Freddie Gillespie and and Matt Mooney earlier. Jonah Bolden, Bolden, I think he'll play a bigger role than yeah. he did at Sydney. So let's hope we see the best out of him. Mitch McCarron and Mojave King helping out in the backcourt. Sam Menenga going back home after... It was another one that had a bit of a falling out with yeah. with, with with forty there at the end in Cairns. It's hard to know what to expect from this team. Yeah, complete up in the air. But like you said, bringing Parker Jackson Cartwright back, I think, mm. is massive. And to have someone like that leading the charge with a brand new head coach, a brand new team, basically, mm. I think is a bit of a stroke of genius. Really, I think yep. they would have done everything they could to get him back. Um, mm. So. On for doing that, that's huge, and I'm glad we get to watch him play again because yes. uh, he was a lot of fun last yes. year. Uh, yeah, look, in terms of the roster, it's it's an interesting one. It's you know, like I said, it's it's all new look, whole new look team, really. So, um, I expect McCarron to bring you know that bit of veteran leadership as mm. well. Mojave King's going to come in, like we said, he seems to have gone away and worked on his game a lot, yep. and the couple games that I, I saw of him. He seems like he's ready to, to have a breakout season, yeah. and he probably needs to yeah. um, if he wants to to go further. Sam Menenga looks comfortable at home, yes. um, so he looks like he's happy and he's looking athletic. Yeah, yes. a couple of big dunks. Yep. So um, that was that was fun. Jonah Bolden, like you said, he's uh, he's going to have to play a bigger role than he did mm. with the Kings, and he's going to have to be really consistent if, mm. if these guys are going to push for finals because. Yeah, there's a few few little holes uh, in in the team that um, you know I, I think is is going to be tough for them to cover. But I mean, he's going to have to be guarding these bigs now mm. with, with Gillespie out because yeah. yep. unfortunately we've seen him kind of get in foul trouble a few yes. times throughout his career. Yep. But um, he can't afford to do that, especially his first round. Mm. So no, look, I, I am excited for it because uh, again, it's always exciting to see a, a brand. Brand new team, basically, yeah, yeah. especially headed by a brand new head coach. Yeah. So they're going to be interesting. I think there's going to be some growing pains there for sure. Um, but if they can all figure it out and all get on the same page, then uh, they'll, they'll be an exciting team for sure. Perth Wildcats. I think plenty of reasons for the Red Army to be excited about yeah. what this team can do. 
think they would have been disappointed with the way things ended last mm-hmm. season after after they put themselves in a in a really good position. But they've been able to keep most of the group together, and I think based on what we've seen, I think our mans are will sort of be able to play this a similar role to what Sar yeah, played. So. I think Dylan Windler looks like he would be an upgrade from what we mm-hmm. have seen so far on Jordan Usher, and you probably probably say that. Elijah Pepper is an upgrade on Corey Webster, so the rest of the team's the same, but I think in the changes they've made, they've probably got better. Yeah, look, the Cats look un- unreal right now. Mm. It's, it's them and the Kings, and then a fair gap of mm. everyone else at the moment. So, look, I, I expect us to see a, a bit more potential this year. Again, another another year under his belt and just a pre- another preseason under his belt. I, I expect to see him a bit this year. Yep. Bryce is going to do Bryce things. Mm. I'm always excited to watch Bryce play. Um, I think Aquera is he had a really good off season um, here in NBL One West yeah. and, and played some really good basketball towards the end of the, yep. of the season and um, he looked like he was in some good form going into into the preseason for them. Um, Hiram Harris again another guy that was massive for them last yes. year just did all the little things yeah. just did all the little things. Keanu, I mean he's he's always fun to watch yeah. and, and he looks like he's in really good shape yep. from the little snippets that I've seen. Doolittle's a good one. Doolittle, mm. I was a big fan of Doolittle last mm. year, constantly talking about him. And I think having that continuity in, within the group, and especially with imports, is mm. huge. Um, obviously, Jesse, we know what we're going to get out of Jesse. Yeah. And just that just that veteran leadership from him and mm. being able to get everyone on the same page. Um, yeah, Michael Harris, like I mm. said, I'm hoping to see some, some minutes punch through him yeah. because... Uh, like I said, I got to see him up close and personal mm. this, this year in the NBA on West and a lot of fun to play with. Absolute motor on him. Can flat out score the ball. Really switched on defensively, which I think is probably a bit of an underrated thing from him yep. that uh, people overlook. Because he's so athletic, he can just he can stay in front of people and he reads the game really well, so I'm really excited. Mm. And hopefully he uh, he gets some, some opportunity there. Ty Webster, we know we're going to get from him. Just a character, which is, which is always good. <laughs> yes. But I thought he was, towards the end of last year, I thought he did a great job of running the team. Yep. Elijah Pepper looks like an absolute flat-out scorer yes. and, a, and a bull. He's, yes. he's, a, he's a big body, so he's going to be an interesting one. Kind of going to be Pepper, Harris and Henschel playing for some minutes. Yep. So it's going to be interesting to see who, who comes out mm. and, and performs. Windler, left the shooter, so that's going to be mm. that's going to be fun to watch. I think shooters usually do well in this league. Yep. So he's, uh, he's a good pick-up for them. And then Almanza, I think, is is huge. The the question mark over the Cats was always going to be how do they um, cover for Saar, yeah. losing Saar, and I think they've picked up the perfect player. Yeah, they have. Yeah. The absolute perfect player. And he's he's probably one of my, probably the top of my list of, of people to watch this season mm. um, from his uh, you know, his resume already yeah. uh, at such a young age and, and what he's been able to do on the on the national stage already for him, um, for his country and the Cats are primed for a big season. And mm. I'm sure really and his coaching staff are excited to, to get the thing rolling. Mm. And yeah, we're looking forward to the Cats for sure. South East Melbourne Phoenix, another team that's completely new look. So Mike Kelly coming to his first season. Simon Mitchell has had a big say in putting this team yep. together. And probably after the way last season went, they had to start start again in mm. a lot of ways. And why not go go and look at the Sydney Kings who have been so successful? So they've got Angus Glover, they've got Derek Walton, they've got Jordan Hunter, they've got Tom Vodanovic who all played in championships at the Kings. They've got Nathan Sobey to come down to Melbourne. A couple of new imports. Joe Wieskamp is one of those. Matt Hurt, the other. Malik Lewis, the next star. Again, it's it's just a matter of how they all gel. Oh, for sure. And, uh, yeah, look, like I said, Simon Mitchell, another good friend of the show. <laughs> Going and running it over there, which is awesome. And congrats to him for, for picking up that gig. That's great. Yeah, look, they look like they've uh, they mean business, obviously, with with all the incoming players, and they've gone and got pieces that um, I think fit how Mike Kelly and his coaching staff really want to play. Mm. <laughs> but again, another pretty much new looking team. Mm. Um, you know, you've got three returning guys that are all role players. Yep. And yeah, look, I I think that. Uh, Guys like Walton Jr., obviously, and Sobes are going to be the go-to for mm. sure. But they've put lots of good pieces around them. Um, Geordie Hunter, I think, is going to be great for them. Yeah. Um, he's going to be the perfect, kind of the perfect big for Sobe and Walton yep. Jr. Yep. Um, doesn't necessarily need the ball, yeah. but is probably the best pick-and-roll big man in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you've got guys like Sobe and Walton coming off mm. those, 
even guys like Ben Air and um, coming off those picks, um, I think that's going to be fun to watch. And then obviously Angus Glover, you know, one of my one of my favourites. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's going to be fun in, in yeah. that green jersey. But yeah, look, they're they're going to take a while to to figure it out for sure. They're a bit of a toss of the coin as well. So hopefully Mike and, and his coaching staff can, can get them rolling early. Sydney Kings. Um... It's hard to think anyone wouldn't have them as their, their championship yeah. favourites right now because the team that they've got together under Brian Gorgian with Xavier Cooks coming back, it looks, it looks unbelievable on, on paper. So you, they've been able to bring back Alex Tui, Court Noy. We expected totally different Jalen Adams, I think, this yep. season to what we saw last season. Jalen Galloway now back after getting a taste of the NBA. Mm-hmm. And then they bring in Bull Kowal, Cam Oliver. Isaiah Leaf is an underrated signing yes. as well. He's, he's going to be a great pickup. Kelly, Leah, Will Pepe, he, he, he's, a, he's a man beast. He's, yes, he he's an absolute monster. Um, even Tyler Robertson's going to have his moments as a, as a guard too. Mm-hmm. Um, they are a team that legitimately goes 12 deep. They've got an enormous amount of talent. Yeah, they do. Yeah, if they can stay healthy, then it's their championship to lose, mm-hmm. honestly. I think that a lot, of, a lot of the outgoing players, they've been able to sign even a step ahead. Of them because yeah, yeah. uh, I mean, bringing in a guy like Cam Oliver, yeah. like you said, Bull Qual's massive. Bringing back Zave is great. Gorge at the helm yes. is, uh, is is pretty cool to see. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one because uh, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the talk about Gorge with the Boomers team is that his game style is a bit outdated. Mm. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how he plays with with this crop of guys that super athletic. Are going to want to get out and run, you know. It's it's going to be uh, interesting to see how how all that unfolds. I think Tui is primed for a massive season, yeah. and uh, like you said, Jalen Adams is going to be a, a different Jalen Adams yeah. than we saw last year. So, look, I'm I'm excited to to really watch these guys and see how they figure it out and see mm. how they share the minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, there's only so many minutes that can go around, and lots of these guys are used to playing big big minutes. So. Look, oh, the big thing that I am expecting from these guys is to be a defensive juggernaut, mm-hmm. and uh, teams are going to struggle to score on them because they are, like I said, they're long, they're athletic, mm. and yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be. Uh, it's certainly going to be fun to watch. So yes, looking yes. Forward to it. Last one: Tasmania Jack Jumpers. So, an amazing performance to win the championship last season. Not many changes, but significant ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, losing Jack McVay, he is irreplaceable. Craig Sword, I guess, is mm-hmm. their new import will be tasked with filling up what Jack did in as many ways as he can. Gorjak Gak sort of replaces Marcus Lee as that two-headed monster up, up front with, yeah. with Will Magne. Um, they were able to find Ruben Tarangi late once they lost lost Jack. Um, aside from that, everyone coming back. So great to see Milton Doyle back again, Jordan Crawford back again, and Will Magne again. I think those three, this is their, their team now, I guess. How they go, I think, is going to be dependent on how those three can sort of sort of stand up. Yeah, oh, I totally agree with you. Um, I think that obviously signing Gorjak is a a big signing because uh, the Marcus Lee loss, but the the Jack McVeigh loss is, is going to mm. be hard to cover. It, it really is. Um, again, I think they're going to have to do it by committee rather than finding someone to just completely fill his shoes yep. because you're not going to find someone to fill his shoes mm. the, the same way that, that he did. Crawford. Um, and Doyle is a massive re-signing mm. to get both those guys back is, is massive. And I think Will Magne after a, a huge off-season you know, with the Boomers and I, th- I think just hopefully having him healthy the whole season yep. again is going to be is going to be great. And, and Tazzy's Tazzy's going to be there uh, again. You know, Scott Roth team who, who've known mm. that uh, they're going to find a way. They're absolutely going to find a way. So, uh, yeah, look, I expect them to be right up and about come playoffs. But, uh, yeah, Jack Jack is certainly a big one mm. yeah, that, that they've lost. So. All right, Cody, time for you to make some predictions yeah. um, to wrap up this first episode of the season. Um, let's start with the big one. Maybe it's the most obvious one. Who do you expect to win the championship? So according to Tab Touch, the market has the Sydney Kings out in front, $3.75, Melbourne United $6, the Wildcats six fifty. Mm-hmm. The Jack Jumper six fifty, the Breakers nine dollars, the Phoenix nine dollars, the thirty six is thirteen dollars, 
The Hawks, $13. The Bullets, $29. The Taipans, $34. Are you willing to say anyone but the Kings right now? Not really. Uh, I think, like I said, I think it's the Kings to lose. Um, that would be my pick. Um, although I do think I do think the Cats are mm. right there with them. So, um, look, I, I will go with the Kings. And, yeah, look, I just – I really – can't see too many teams being able to beat them in a series. I think it's probably the, the thing it came down to for me. Top six is a is a little bit tougher, Cody. So I think based on that, we've got the Kings and the Wildcats in the top two spots. Yep. Um, how do you see the top six rounding out from there? Uh, probably go with Tassie and Melbourne in that top four. Mm. Um, and then the two playing teams, oh, this was the biggest uh, just toss of the coin and – and that kind of thing because you know, I think we've got the Kings and the Cats as the cream of the crop, obviously. Yeah. I think Tassie and Melbourne, uh, that next little crop of, of teams that um, will separate themselves. But then really it's it's pretty much every other team fighting for those last two spots. Mm. And it's, it's tough because there's all but maybe one or two that I can see actually making that spot. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for me, Cairns is probably that one that mm. I can't see fighting for it. Especially coming back from a slow start, it's going to be tough. Yeah. So, um, look, I, I'm going to go with the Sixers and Brisbane. Mm -hmm. A little different. I think the Sixers roster is, is rounding out nicely, and I think that they'll start off well without having Martin there. Yeah. The Carroll coming yeah. in, I think he's he's great. Rizzy, I think you know they they kind of showed me enough in the in the preseason mm -hmm. to to prove that they're going to have a good season. Mm -hmm. Obviously, coming down to injuries and, and that kind yeah. of thing as always, but uh, I kind of like that trajectory that they're on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that would be it. Kings, Cats, Tassie, Melbourne, Sixers, and Brizzy mm -hmm. are kind of my six. MVP. Are you willing to say anyone but Bryce Cotton? <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. Look, I think you know we've obviously got some some former former MVPs for the Kings at the mm. moment, but I just think that there's too many players on that team to mm. to just constantly steal votes yeah. from each other. Yeah. And and I think while the Cats have a, a similar problem, there's there's lots of talent on mm. there. I do think Bryce is going to just give us another yeah. epic Bryce season. So yeah. uh, I. I I think he's he's probably my top choice for that. Next gen award. It's tough because the the field is so tough. wide for this. Anyone that's twenty four and and under, anyone jump out? Well, I had it, yeah. Look, I had two of you, mm -hmm. but again, it, it's it's a toss, a toss up between a, a few players, mm. and, and like you said, it's it's really hard um, because of the crop of players coming in. But I think he's probably primed for the. The best season of the lot. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to stick. Yeah, there's a lot of candidates. <laughs> I, I went Taron Armstrong, yeah. but you could go Lockie Olbrick. You could yeah. go any of the next stars that yeah. potentially could could break out. I mean, you could have Rocco. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of different different candidates. Best defensive player. Uh, I'm split with this one mm -hmm. between Shea and McDaniel. Yeah. So they're the two I'm split between. I think obviously if Shea has a full season under his belt. It's, mm. it's always his to lose, mm. um, you know. But I think, you know, Sam's had a proven few years now. Yep. And, again, if, if Rizzi's going to really make a push for the playoffs, mm. I think he's going to be a major factor yeah. in that. So I can't really split them, yes. unfortunately, and I don't like to do that. But uh, they're, they're my two at the moment. Yeah, I, I think Sam was unlucky to not win yeah, it last year. Not, not that Shea wasn't deserving, no. but I think Will Magna will put himself in the, yep. in the mix too. Um, coach of the year. This is an interesting one because we – it's hard to predict to see into the future, but who would you go with? I think if the Kings do what we think they're going to do, I think mm. Gorge wins it. Yeah. But again, you know, I, it really is a toss of the coin with this one. It, it's it's so tough to pick because it's hard to really figure out what they you know, consider a coach of the year. Yeah. Uh, like I think with the Hawks last year in Tatum, mm. them straight into the finals, mm. obviously pushing it to the yeah. semi final, yeah. but. You know, he probably was the best coach out of everyone, really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it is really hard. But I've, I've gone with Gorge because I do think that the Kings will, will, be, uh, will be that good. Yeah. It's always tough when this doesn't go to the championship winner because yeah. you feel like if you win the championship, yeah. you've done the best coaching job. But 
you have to say Scott Roth is unlucky to not have won it last year yes. after what he did to 100%. win a championship, but yep. they give out the award before the yeah. <laughs> before the championship oh, is decided. Inch. Most improved player, I think we might agree on this one. Yeah, Tyrell Harrison, I mm. think, is, is primed for a massive season. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, from from watching his preseason, um, he just he looks in really good shape. He looks like he's got some good form under mm. him. And, uh, again, if, if Brizzy are going to make a push, he's going to have to be one of the more dominant players. And mm. I think he's, he's ready for that mm. big step. Last one. What's something you're excited for? Couple this things. season, yeah, a couple of things. I think the return of Zave is huge yep. for me. I think that's going to be fun to see. You know what he's kind of learnt away in the NBA mm. camps and stuff like that. Montrez Harrell's impact mm. on on Adelaide and uh, what he can do just coming in late and, mm. and um, how he's going to help them to start the season off. Um, and then the big returning names and the the new faces and new teams. Mm-hmm. I think is probably the, the few big things that mm. I'm really excited for and. I'm obviously always excited to see the next stars and yes. how they perform. So lots to be excited for this season. All right. it's so a lot of ground covered on this first episode, Cody. Mm-hmm. So thanks to Tap Touch, you'll check out the social media platforms this week and you've done a bit more of a preview of each of the round one mm-hmm. games. So we'll, we'll r- race through these to finish off the show. Starts on Thursday night, RSC Arena to open up Hoops Fest, grand final rematch or championship series rematch, Melbourne United and the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. What do you think? Yeah, look, excited for this one, and it's it's always fun to to see the grand final rematch, mm. um, first game of the season. So, uh, I think Melbourne get it. Um, mm. I yeah, I think obviously on a neutral neutral playing yes. ground, yep. which is which is an odd one mm. um, coming into the first round. But I'm uh, I'm going to call Melbourne for this one. Friday night home game for the Perth Wildcats without it being an official home game, mm. but um, you would think ten thousand plus. Fans in red will still be there against the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Yeah, look, excited for that and excited to see uh, the Perth fans come out in force as they mm. always do. I, I do think the Cats get this one and start their campaign off um, pretty mm. solid. Doubleheader then on Saturday, and this is at the old Challenge Stadium, so HBF Stadium for this doubleheader. So that's going to be fun to, to sort of step back in a bit of a time warp and, yeah. and go back to the old venue. First up, Brisbane Bullets, the New Zealand Breakers, I wouldn't mind jumping on this for the bullets at two dollars eighty, thanks to Tab Touch. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I'd definitely be jumping all over that. Brizzy's just going to be too big, mm. I think. Mm. And uh, with Gillespie out for for New Zealand, I, I think that you know the the two headed monster in Harrison and, and Rocco are going to uh, probably dominate this game a bit. So I would be uh, jumping all over the bullets on that one. Last or secondly on Saturday, the Cairns Taipans, the Illawarra Hawks. Can the Taipans overcome not having a not having a point guard. I don't think so in a fairly guard-heavy Hawks team. Mm. Um, I think it's probably one of the worst teams to run up against yes. um, when, you, when you're lacking all your guards. So I, I do think the Hawks get that one. Last up, back at RSA Arena on Sunday, this is going to be a lot of fun because Montrez Harrell is going to be there for the 36ers and all the big names are going to be there for the Kings. Kings or 36ers to wrap up Hoops Fest? Yeah, this is probably the most exciting game mm. of the round for me because, uh, of, like you said, all the big names. So, look, I, I think the Kings do get it. But I reckon uh, Montrez Harrell comes in and really stamps his mm. authority. So looking forward to that. All right. So check out Tap Touch for more on their socials and check out taptouch.com.au and hopefully we'll hopefully help you find a winner. Yeah, this year, Cody, we'll come up with some exclusives as well. And I think we'll try to come up with something for the Friday night mm. Wildcats game as well. So put your thinking cap on and yep. we'll we'll be able to, f- able to sort you out there. It's been a big first episode. So thank you for joining me once again, Cody. Looking forward to the season ahead. Let's finish off. Cam Glidden announced yeah. his retirement after 342 games in the NBL at Cairns, Brisbane, South East Melbourne and New Zealand. He's third all-time in the 40-minute era for three-point makes mm. and he's now already got his first coaching job as, as yeah. well. So he hasn't wasted any time. He found a, found a second home for himself over, over in New Zealand. Um, like you, he's a, a WA product who made it big on the, mm. on the world stage. Um, how about we finish off with... Some words about about Cam from you. Yeah, look, always one of my favourite players to watch. You know, like you said, WA product, which is, which is always fun to watch. Um, you know, no matter what team they're playing for. So, look, lucky enough to play with Cam at, at under twenties, and then uh, yeah, look, obviously I've watched every step of his career since. Mm-hmm. So, 
Look, massive congratulations to him, him and his family. Um, heck of a career to be third all time in three pointers in the forty minute era mm-hmm. is uh, is nothing to laugh at. That's uh, that's a super impressive stat, and uh, especially with the uh, amount of talent we've had running through um, the league. So um, that's that's awesome, and uh, hopefully he enjoys retirement. And, uh, looking forward to seeing what he does with his coaching career. He'll make it for sure. Now that's why I backed him on Tap Touch. Hey, Luke. Yes, Gene Simmons. He's probably the best when it comes to this stuff. Thanks, Gene. You've got the touch. You got the touch. You got the power. Got the touch? Choose Tap Touch. Better your bet. Download the app today. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call 1 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.